Way. That's a swing from Chris Dickerson on the first pitch from Brian Bannister. 16th season as a big league manager for Dusty Baker, his second with the Cincinnati Reds. Come in today, one game above 500 at 31 and 30. And in the National League Central, that puts them two and a half back of the Brewers. The Cardinals in second place, they're a half game back. Big bounce to Butler at first. Three pitches, one out for Bannister. Beautiful day at Coffin Stadium. There were thunderstorms in the forecast, but a gorgeous day. 76 degrees with a light breeze blowing in from right. We started right on time at 110 Central. Time at 10 brought to you by the parking spot. Easy to spot, easy to park. The parking spot at KCI. And now Alex Gonzalez. Ah. Brian Bannister said he was inspired but why, by what Luke Hochaver did a couple of nights ago, just coming right at these Reds hitters who are really struggling in the month of June and just force them to put the ball in play early in the count. I think more pitchers didn't need to think that way. I think a lot of pitchers want to, you know, Banning went through that part where he wanted to create more strikeouts, and you really got to have a lot of tough pitches to get strikeouts. Velocity, breaking ball. And uh, you know, really, just put the ball in play. You know, I think if he just goes back, Ryan, to that first game when he came up from Omaha and Cleveland, and just think about that game all the time, and that, that to me, that that's all he needs to think about. Only had one strikeout in six innings that day. No runs allowed. Alex Gonzalez with his second hit of the series. Well, that's just from slaughter that stayed down at in middle end. He didn't have to reach quite as far for it. If he got it more to the outer half, it would have been more effective, and he was able to hit a line drive. Over Hernandez at shortstop. That was the Cincinnati Reds' 10th hit of this series. And this is game three. 0 and 1 on Brandon Phillips. The Reds in the month of June are hitting 197. That's the worst in the National League. Brandon Phillips. Couple of singles in this series, no RBIs. Off the end of the bat, and that lands in front of Meyer in center field. So with one out, back to back singles. And up comes Lance Nix. I think Banny had the right idea there on the first pitch, Ryan. He just left it up. Uh, and stayed out to place a curveball that he really wanted to go down and out of half, but just stayed just up just a little longer than he wanted to, and Phillips was able to get the end of the bat on it. And now Lance Nix, who has been hitless in this series as the Reds' cleanup man, 0 for 6, and he has struck out three times. Bannister misses low for ball one. A normal hitter's approach to hitting that curveball would be they, if it starts at the waist, then it's probably going to be one that's hittable. If it starts mid thigh, then it's probably going to end up out of the strike zone. The two hits in this inning, that's the first time all series the Reds have had more than one hit in an inning. 2 0. Well, we went through the same thing as a club here. They, they, we kept saying, well, well, Rawls just need to put back to back hits together, create a first and third situation, and and that it was really hard and easy to talk about.
E, all of the above. <laughs> I would say all of the above right there. <laughs> you know, you can even put character in there. I mean, uh, he, you know, I talked to him about playing the different positions, and he said, you know, that really doesn't bother me. He said, as long as I know ahead of time where I'm playing, I can get ready for it. But he said the beauty of the whole deal now is that he's getting more playing time than he's ever gotten before. He is the ultimate team guy, and this goes back to his days in college. When he was at ASU, he had a full-ride scholarship but the Sun Devils are trying to bring in some high school players the next year. They're out of scholarships, and Willie Bloomquist gave up his scholarship so that ASU could use it on another player. And his family was in a situation where they could help out Willie with his college. But still, that's a lot of money, and this is a guy coming from Washington, so you figure out-of-state tuition. Yeah, it, had, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't cheap, that's for sure. And having a battle with Cueto. Well, he's not going to gripe about not being a regular player. I mean, he knows his role, but you and I discussed this at the end of the broadcast last night. I mean, he, has he proven that if the opportunity presented itself, that he should get a really long look at being an everyday player? Well, if he can, it doesn't really matter whether you play in one position or, or several. If you're out there every day and you're producing with the bat and your legs and and just your aggressiveness and breaking up double plays. And I think that's a guy that you might say, well, maybe we, uh, maybe the first team to give him a shot. You know, a lot of teams, you, the way it's built and salaries and whatever keeps a guy like Willie from playing every day. And managers like having a guy like Willie because you can play him at different spots, but maybe never taking that look and saying, hey, can this guy play one position every day? It's going to be it. 10 pitch at bat at least. Bloomquist battling Cueto in the first inning. Thirty-eight percent, a slight edge with Willie's versatility over his defense. Up the middle and into center field. Willie did that twice last night. So he wins the 10 pitch battle. The Royals have one on one out in the first inning. You know, the way he's taking the ball up the middle, he just takes his fastball, he stays inside of it, and slices it back through the middle. They might have to put a shift on Willie. They might have to put the shortstop over the bag, you know, because <laughs> he's, he's really got that, that spot zeroed in right now. You go back to that pitch right where the fastball's running in on your Ryan, and if you try to hit around that ball or pull it, you hit that weak ground ball at third. He's, he's been able to get inside of that ball and really turn it back through the middle and hit it solid. Which is exactly what Kevin Seitzer wants to see from the hitters. You get two strikes on you, shorten up, try and use the middle of the field. Well, that's not Kevin. That, that's the way he hit. You know, he stayed inside the ball, sliced it to the center field the right field all the way down the line down the right field line so if he can get his guys back to that same focus that they had in spring training he'd be happy with that off of Hairston's glove and the Reds do not get an out at times it's a game of inches and that was less than an inch away from an inning ending double play well it's just right off the end of his glove he just tried to snatch it a little bit but pulled it down before the ball got in there and just didn't have enough steam to, on, on the throw to second base to, to force uh, Willie at second base. So the Reds getting a run in the top of the first, thanks to an error, and now an error opens the door for the Royals. Two on one out against Cueto. And now Mike Jacobs. Jacobs one for four last night. One of his outs he lined to right. It looked like last night, Frank, that Mike was getting back to trying to use the middle of the field, maybe a little easier, smoother swing. Well, he didn't, he didn't chase the ball away. I think that was the big difference right there, Ryan. He waited for his pitch inside and the middle inside, and he, and he really turned on it. If he, when he gets in trouble, he try to chase that ball away from him while he can't hit. 
and hit effectively and that's the pitch they've been really getting the swing at the swing of bad balls off the plate away but last night he did a better job of getting his pitch and when he gets his pitch he hits it. Jacobs is kind of in that Miguel Olivo category that we described when Miguel hit his third home run in Cleveland that he is so big and so strong that he doesn't have to swing 100 percent to drive the ball over the fence. Well he doesn't really have to but uh, you know when you're when you're that big and you and you really are struggling then you t the tendency to swing harder when you should swing less so like George always say try to hit the ball uh, far but not hard and, and that that theory meaning. Just, just trust your hands to hit to create the bat speed for you. If it does, you get the, then that'll create the distance that you need. But so when you try to force it with your body, over swing, then that's where you chase a lot of bad pitches, or you get your pitch and foul it off. Royals were outstanding last night in situations like this. Seven out of twelve with runners in scoring position. Still two and two on Jacobs. That's that one pitch we were talking about on the outside, and, uh, and it can only go so far because he stands straight up. And so, if he can't get around the ball to where he can pull it straight away, center to right center, he just kind of cuts it and just slices it off on the left field side. Cueto has an outstanding changeup. Fastball at 95, and that fills out the count. Bloomquist reached with a single, a 10 pitch at bat. Butler reached on an error by third baseman Jerry Hairston. Now normally, I would say that uh, Trey Hillman would run in this situation with, with Willie at second base, but with Jacobs uh, way he's been struggling I'm, I'm, I'd be a little afraid to say he would run in this situation especially with a left handed hitter up not going and Jacobs lifts it to center Bloomquist is back to the bag as Dickerson gets it back to the infield so two down And now Miguel Olivo. Two hits a run scored for Olivo in this series. He's hit in five straight. Royals don't have a lot of long hitting streaks in the lineup but they have a lot of hitters that are streaking. The Jesus six in a row Butler nine in a row Olivo five Kiaspo seven T and six. One one. They had a conversation with Miguel before the game today, Ryan, and asked him. I said, "What do you think is the improvement that you've made in terms of laying off maybe a lot of the balls away that you were chasing? Now you're getting your pitch and hitting your pitch." And he basically said that when he wasn't playing regularly, like he, like he is now, he was a tendency to try to do too much in those one or two days that he was playing. And now he's up there, say so he's not even thinking anymore. He's just looking for the ball. That is over the bag and fair. Blomquist is home. Butler will be held at third. Olivo drives in Blomquist to tie the game at one. But this is a little cutter away from him, and he was just like I say, he said, "I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to look for the ball and react to the ball." And, and that ball was away. And normally he'd have his shoulder out and he'd be swinging and miss that pitch, but he says he said with consistent playing time, then he's been able to relax at the plate and not think so much. All that you just said was worth the whoo. <laughs> Aspo didn't mean to go around. That went off of his foot. It's Alberto. Three hits and a home run in the series, and he's hit in seven straight. Wow. 
One ball one strike and this is really all considered bonus time for the Royals. If Hairston handles the Billy Butler ground ball it's an inning inning double play. One run home so far Butler at third Olivo at second. One ball two strikes. Both teams taking advantage of an error in their halves of the first inning. That pitch was supposed to be in, and Kiaspo fouls it off the left field line and out of play. Well, you see, he missed it by quite a bit, too, Ryan. He got the first two in there, but that one just ran right out over the plate, and that's the Kiaspo's strength. Trying to pitch inside again, and Kiaspo fouls it away. It's a 30 pitch inning for Cueto. If Butler, if his ground ball turns into an inning inning double play, it's a 16 pitch inning, so he's essentially using up a whole nother inning. Two and two. Royals did not score in the first inning once during that long road trip, and now twice in this series they have scored in the first. Aspo just kind of golfs it to Hernandez at first, and that's the inning. But an error leads to a run, and we're tied at the end of one inning. Fifteen years ago, Kia Motors arrived in the U.S. with one vehicle. Since then, our lineup has grown to 12 award-winning models. Today, we outsell Mazda, Volkswagen, and Lexus. How are we celebrating our success? By rolling back prices on select models. Save up to $3,500 on the Spectra or Sportage for a limited time. Now available on demand. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. There's someone chasing a dream. If you make it, we all make it. We can change the world, Biggie Smalls. Can't change the world unless we change ourselves. No dream is too big. Notorious. His parents were among those who marched for civil rights in 1963. Ryan Howard knows the meaning of strength. His parents taught him how to use it. You can see it in his eyes. And you witnessed it when he lifted that trophy. This is beyond inspiration. This is beyond baseball. Another nice crowd on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Dealers, Royals leading the American League in complete games. They had 10 all of last year, seven already, five from Grinky. So Zach Grinky has more complete games than 12 teams in the American League. 12 teams. Brian Bannister has two in his two plus seasons with the Royals, and that is a beautiful bunt for a while. Good choice by Tian to wait till that ball got out of the grass. And once it hit the dirt, it took a left turn. Well, there are some fields still around that the grass doesn't come up against the white line, but here it rolls off the grass and has nowhere to go but foul. That's 
I think Mark. I don't know if he used a makeup artist for his eye black, but he, he usually wears the worst eye black <laughs> of, any, of any guy that goes on the field. Like he just takes it and just throws it on there and, and don't get in the mirror and kind of taper it up or anything. He just says, whoop, here it is. <laughs> That's a song, isn't it? Well, it could be. <laughs> I don't want to sing it. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> you wonder if there's any eye black left for his teammates when he's done. I think that is on stick. Jay Bruce is out, one away in the second inning. So Jay Bruce now, six for his last 51. That'll bring up first baseman Ramon Hernandez. Off day for the Royals tomorrow, and then interleague play continues on Tuesday with the Arizona Diamondbacks here. Gil Mesh. Who is coming off 11 strikeouts in his start against the Indians on Wednesday will pitch against lefty Doug Davis. And that's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday series. All night games at 7 10, and the Cardinals are in town next weekend. Hernandez off the fist, and Hernandez to the grass for the out. Good pitch by Bannister, two down in the second inning. <laughs> Dusty Baker's team just hanging above 500 at 31 and 30. Waiting for those bats to come to life. I mentioned the Reds hitting 197 in June. That's the worst in the National League. But they're pitching. In the month of June is the fifth best. That's what's allowing the Reds to hang in there. Ryan Hannigan had a two run double last night. Here are the Reds third in the National League Central. I think that's always a, a worry to have off a manager's mind when you know your pitching is there and you know the offense there just. It just hadn't come around, and you go to a team like Cleveland, where Eric Wedge is saying, "Look, we've got, we've got the pitching too. We just got to wait for our guys to get back too." So they got a couple of pitchers they need to get back, and and some key players like Grady Sizemore to get back. And they feel like that'll be the time they'll make that run too. So they just want to kind of stay close and hope nobody takes off in their division. To Hernandez at short, Bannister gets the Reds in order in the second inning. And by AT&T, switch to the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered.
Tied at one, bottom of the second inning. It'll be Mark Tian, Luis Hernandez, and Mitch Meyer against Johnny Cueto. Both teams scoring an unearned run in the first inning. And on the corner, strike one to Tian, who homered last night as eighth of the year and has hit in six straight games. And that's stroked into center field. So you got a hold of that low slider. Lead off man on. Well, the one thing the Royals have been doing well, Ryan, is that, that they stand with that consistent approach. Yeah, that's the slider coming down and in. And Mark could have easily rolled over on that ball and hit a ground ball to second base, but he really stayed through it. Line drive to center field. So it's almost like they're. All of a sudden, everybody's going back to spring training and going back to Kevin's approach to say, it worked in spring training. Let's try it again. Well, it's kind of gone in waves if you go back to spring <laughs> waves, training. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As in Hawaii's Waimea Bay waves. <laughs> but in spring training, they were on top of the wave. Driving balls to the center of, of the field, a lot of home runs to center, a lot of home runs to the opposite field. And then the waves crashing down on them at the beginning of the season. Tian running out at second and a double play. Nice play by Alex Gonzalez. Two down, nobody on. But then the Royals recovered for a while after two or three weeks and started driving the ball to the middle of the field again. And then got away from that for another two or three weeks. And as you said, Frank, maybe taking the advice of Kevin and saying, hey, you might not like where your batting average is right now, but trust me, over the long term, this is where you're going to have some success. Uh, yeah, a lot of hits in the middle of the field, and Kevin believes it. He lived it. I mean, he's been there, done that. So he, so they can't say that he doesn't he doesn't know what he's talking about. And But I think we talked about it all year, that uh, you, you've seen where one or two guys a day might not be swinging the bat well. Uh, but you always seem to have four, three or four guys, maybe five swinging about well you know, on any given day. But the Royals went the way of the Cincinnati Reds where nobody's swinging about well. And now they're all coming back together at the same time. One and two on Mitch Meyer, who snapped an 0 for 16 last night. Well, name me one real good hitter in the major leagues that doesn't use the middle of the field. It's hard. It's hard to do. Uh, I mean, you, you, you can name some guys that are real productive, but the, the strikeouts come with that production. But when you're talking about putting the at bats, the hits, and the run production, the low strikeouts with that, not very many at all. Cueto strikes out his first, and thanks to the double play, faces only three in the second.
third inning and let's take a look at today's Roadrunner Turbo Speed Pitch comparison and you've got the power righty Johnny Cueto is at 97 and more of a control righty and Brian Bannister has hit 89 to the first two innings. You can double your speed with Roadrunner Turbo from Time Warner Cable. Jerry Hairston Jr. will lead off. And a cutter in for strike one. Hairston's error in the bottom of the first led to the Royals run. First time that Hairston has played in this series. A once highly touted second baseman in the Orioles organization now has become. Well, the Willie Bloomquist of the Cincinnati Reds in his major league career, just like Willie Bloomquist, he's played everywhere but pitcher and catcher. Well, Ryan, the thing that I noticed about the Royals over this last road trip is they really got more aggressive going in to break up double plays. Here you see Tien does a great job of sliding before he gets to the bag and then coming up under. Gonzalez at shortstop, you know, Willie Bloomquist, Mike Jacobs. You can go back to a handful of times on the last road trip where the guys are really gone in hard at second base and and I like I like this attitude about them right now. It's always nice to see those middle infielders getting up. <laughs> Instead of you getting up. Well, I had George and Mac Ray. They, they kind of kept the heat off of me. <laughs> and one thing they know is. You go in hard and knock one of us over. Our guys can come in harder and knock their guys over. So you get a little balance right there. But but I think that anytime you uh, you you plan this game, you got to go into second base with the intent to break up the double play. Speaking of second base, on this date in 1973, one Frank White got his first two major league hits. They were against Dahl Alexander in, in, in Baltimore. That's right. That was my first official start. Now my first game, I came in in the seventh and <laughs> playing shortstop. Meyer in center field. And the first ball I got, and they had low lights in Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. And the first ball I got. We got lost in the lights of ball hitting right in the chest. <laughs> so that was my welcome to the big leagues. <laughs> so it all started, not his first game, but his first hit on this date in 1973, and now in 2009, one of three retired numbers in Royals history. Chris Dickerson trying to bunt his way on. Rounded to Billy Butler in the first inning. Dickerson in there for Willie Tavares, who is in the middle of an 0 for 32 slump. Woo! 0 and 2. You think of Dickerson, you might think football, as in Eric Dickerson, Chris Dickerson, not related to him, but his father, Sam Dickerson, played in the NFL. And Chris Dickerson, when he played Pop Warner football, played with a couple of NFL quarterbacks, Matt Leinert and Matt Castle. Three balls, two strikes. Bannister does not want to let Dickerson get away. He was ahead in the count 0 and 2. Still three balls, two strikes. And a lot of times, Ryan, the pitcher would go 0 2 with a hitter, and 
and they'll, they may try to strike him out. You got two pitches to try to strike him out. When they go to two two, then I think you got to say here, here it is. Let's do something here rather than take it to three and two. Right to Tian. High throw and Butler reaches up to save it. Able to keep his foot on the bag. Two down in the third inning. Mark does a good job. He does everything right. The ball really rode hot at Billy, but we had a couple of plays on the road trip where Billy had to stretch and, and wasn't able to get that foot back down. So the more you have that opportunity, the better you get at it. <laughs> he did a good job right here of getting that foot back down on the base. What do you call that? Body control? <laughs> Would you? Yes. <laughs> Gonzalez to Hernandez. That's the inning. Bannister is. Developmental disabilities and under her guidance, the independent independence Missouri agency helps clients and their families adapt to living in their own homes in the community. So welcome Rita Oliver. Top of the order, David De Jesus, Willie Bloomquist, Billy Butler. David rounded out and what is so far the best defensive play of the game back in the first inning. Now he lines it into center for a base hit. Seven game hitting streak for De Jesus. Again, Ryan's another base hit to center field. This is that fastball cut in on his hands and he didn't try to pull it. Just got inside the ball and drove a line drive to center field. That's a good piece of hitting right there. You can just see him pull his hands in and get inside the ball. A lot of times a hitter would try to pull that pitch or, or hit, hit, hit around it and hit a ground ball to first base. Willie Bloomquist had a 10 pitch at bat with Cueto in the first inning and single to center. Came around to score on Olivo's double. So Bloomquist with five hits. Two runs scored, three RBIs in the series. David Jesus has attempted only two stolen bases so far this year. One successful. Thank you. 
One and one back to you call it presented by Sprint. We ask you what is the most important asset Willie Bloomquist brings to the team. 45% now saying his versatility followed by his defense. Then his speed only 9% saying his bat. <laughs> 298 hitter. <laughs> Keep voting. 432 432 enter keyword royal followed by a space and your answer. That's exactly where Hannigan wanted it. He stuck the right pinky out, meaning a fastball outside, and Cueto nailed the target. Johnny Cueto with the second best ERA in the National League and the third toughest opponent's batting average in the National League. A little bit inside, so he's not really a big name yet, but he is one of the best in the National League and consistent this year. He's gone at least seven innings. In nine of his last 10 starts, which is almost unheard of these days, he has not allowed more than four runs in a game all season. And he's given up more than three runs in a game only twice all season. So the Reds know when he's on the mound, they will be in the game. Well, normally he's a quick worker too, and he had that long, long first inning, but but I think that he really uh, works quick. He pitched both sides of the plate, and if you can pitch both sides of the plate and throw strikes, you're going to get deep in ball games. Still two and two. Well, he has the arm, and we've seen a fastball at 97 already today, and times can get up 98, 99. But Red say that he really has a good feel for pitching and realizes that it's not about the radar gun. You can't say that about a lot of young guys in the game today. A lot of them they recognize where that gun is in the stadium and they figure out different ways to take quick peeks at it between between each pitch and and they don't realize that it's OK to throw hard. But if you're throwing hard without command you need to back off a little bit and, and find that comfort zone that you need to be in to throw strikes. Look at that swing by Bloomquist with a nasty slider down and away just to stay alive. You're not going to make any instructional videos out of this swing, but doing whatever he can. Well, that's just basically just trying to put the ball in play. He's not trying to do anything special. He's just looking for the ball and anything close. He's trying to take it out of the umpire's hands and make sure he makes a decision on what happens to him in this at bat. The Jesus runs and Bloomquist pulls it to Hairston, who throws it high. And Hairston has two errors in the game. First and third, nobody out. First with the glove, now with the throw. Well, this situation here, Ryan Harrison does everything right when he catches the ball. They just sort of relaxed, and when he relaxed, the ball just went sailing over uh, Hernandez' head at first base. Jesus at third, Bloomquist at first, and now Billy Butler, who reached on Harrison's first air today on the ground ball. So, with two and a half innings in the books, this game so far has been about taking advantage of errors. Both runs so far are unearned. Billy up the right field line. That is a foul ball. Billy in this at bat with a nine game hitting streak. Here's today's Firestone leaderboard and the longest active hitting streaks in the American League. And Billy second to Tampa Bay's Jason Bartlett. 
Alberto Kiaspo with a seven game streak. Mark Tien a seven gamer. David DeJesus with a seven gamer. 0 oh and 2 on Butler. Well, Billy said before the game that when he goes to the plate, he just thinks about driving the fastball in the right center field and letting everything else kind of take care of itself. And he really wants to try to lay off the ball inside and, and just react to it with his hands more so than looking for it and trying to pull it. Trying to go the other way. It's still 0 and 2. In situations like this, that is the sixth best in the American League. Four straight foul balls. Some young players, the more pressure you put on them, the more they fold. And then there's some guys like Billy Butler, when he was moved to the number three position, you get the best out of them. Their game elevates when you put more pressure on them. Well, the one thing about Billy Ryan is uh, he's never lacked confidence, especially at the, with that bat in his hand. And I don't think any situation would make him uncomfortable at the plate. He really thinks well at the plate. Got him with a fastball in. Cueto strikes out his second. So first and third, one away for Jacobs. Jacobs fly to center his first time. The Royals to take that here. Ball one. has not been a fast worker today. And now he and Hannigan are talking and talk over the 1 0 pitch upcoming to Jacobs. Well, the Royals feel like they need to do something here. The runner at third and less than two outs. But the good ones, and Johnny Cueto is one of the good ones, they can take their game to another level. And Runners are in scoring position. We've seen that from Zach Grinke all year. Staying inside, and it's 2 0. Well, I'm sure Mike Jacobs doesn't mind Cueto staying inside. He just hopes he misses a little bit out over the plate. He's really playing in more to Mike Jacobs' hands when he pitches like this. When he takes a pitch, the batting glove actually twists on his finger and he uses his teeth to pull it straight so the batting glove straightens out again. He is not eating his batting glove. <laughs> and he takes a four pitch walk and they're loaded up for Miguel Oliva. Walks his first. And now Lebo, who doubled home the Royals' run in the first inning. A 
In the first inning, Ronnie just got a little fastball. I mean, a breaking ball on the outside part and just sort of flicked his wrist and pulled it back inside the third base pad. You got to be awful strong to do that, you know, be able to take a ball on the outside corner and pull it all the way back inside the third base line. He just some tremendous wrist and forearms and everything else that goes into that. And now Cueto is missed with five in a row. Toward short. Olivo's going to have to hurry. Beat it. The Royals score a run. Dusty Baker is going to argue it. It wasn't hit very hard. Olivo is going to pick up an RBI and De Jesus comes across to give the Royals a lead. Olivo is kind of a, a lean and a leap to the bag at the last moment. Well, he just uh, that you they always tell uh, runners don't do that because the heel hits first and you can hyperextend that knee. But uh, that that's a that's that's a, that's one of the ones you say it's too close to call. That's a, in the old days you say that tie goes to the runner. <laughs> Driven in both runs and now first and third, two down for Kiasco. <laughs> Alberto grounded out his first time. Well, we talked about Mike Jacobs, how hard he was going into second base. And when you go into second base hard like that, it really takes a little bit of throw, a little bit of velocity off the throw to second base because he opens up and can't get off the ground. But that's a good idea of what we're talking about, the way this team is going. Kiaspo into deep right field. In and out of the glove of Bruce. Almost made a great play. The Royals are going to score two. And Kiaspo with his second triple the year. on Caspo and he really opened up and looked for it and got the bat hit on it and Jay Bruce got there and the ball went in his glove and when he hit the fence it came out he did everything he could but <laughs> but it just didn't hold on to it and Dusty that we haven't seen all the errors at third base and the team not playing well and that was just another thing to really get him upset right there. <laughs> Two outs, Bloomquist and Olivo going on contact. Olivo able to score from first base. Well, they Dave Owen sent him all the way, and I think that uh, Dusty Baker, that was just, just pure frustration right there. This game would just not seem to be going their way in, in no areas today. Yeah, I don't think that was necessarily directed at Jay Bruce. That was more so directed at the fates. Well, just one more thing. What else is going to happen? You know, that's, that's, what, that's the feeling you get as a manager in this situation. Kiaspo at third, two down. And ball one on Mark Tian. Alberto really made a great adjustment there. They, they pounded him inside the first time, and then he decided, okay, I'm going to look for it. And he got, got the bat hit there and, and had some success. Pretty good swing by Tian. One ball, one strike. Mark single to center in the second inning. Everyone starting to warm up at the same time. Royals have two hitters with a seven game hitting streak, one with an eight game hitting streak, one with a nine game hitting streak, and one with a five game hitting streak. All in the lineup today. Two balls, one strike. A 
almost half of those pitches from Cueto coming in the first inning. Two and two. It's a tough pitch to get around on in the 90s up and in. Well, I think he can throw that one all day, and uh, Mark will never hit that one. That, that's just got too much uh, height to it, too much velocity, and with Mark swing, he's, he, he, he almost have to get on top of that and swing straight down to, to get that ball. And a full count. Aspo with a two-run triple, turning a one-run game into a three-run game. This inning really got started because of an error by Jerry Hairston on a ground ball from Bloomquist and Hairston's second error today. Tian into center, Royals lead by four. And two for two. That's his 22nd RBI of the year. And, and again, he's staying true to form, right? Right back through the middle. Uh, I mean, it's almost like the light switch went on with, with, with the broad hitters. And I mean, he does a good job staying back on his backside, getting, getting through the ball, and not trying to pull the ball, just hit the ball where it's pitched, out over the plate, back through the middle. Great job of hitting. Luis Hernandez grounded into a double play his first time, which was started by Gonzalez, and now Gonzalez throws him out. He almost threw that one away. The Royals come up with four in the third against Cueto. In the Go to the top of the fourth inning. <laughs> that wasn't me. Oh, that wasn't you? Oh, okay. What's my look alike. How you doing? Fred White, not to be confused with Frank White, although when you guys were traveling together. All the time. Confusion every now and then. You have a great story about Joe White. Well, Joe called me at 6 <laughs> o'clock in the morning one morning in Cleveland and said, Dad, do I have to go to school today? <laughs> I said, well, Joe, if I was your dad, I'd being not your dad, I would say no, but you probably ought to call your real dad and find out for sure. I don't suppose we got much over a thousand messages mixed up in all this. Yeah, we ended with our luggage in different rooms all the time, so it was pretty confusing back in those days. So what does Fred travel with, Frank, when you open up that luggage and see who's in there? I never open it up. I, look, I see Fred, and I know it's not mine. It was almost automatic that the bell captains would, would mess that up because they said F white on both. <laughs> He got a lot more messages than I got, too, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, Fred is here to talk about Royals alumni fans batting practice. 
which is coming up on July the 11th. July 11th, we'll start at 8 in the morning and go till noon. Uh, come in, have a little breakfast, get a little indoctrination. Uh, guys will put you through a little station in the cage to give you some hitting tips and out on the field. And the alums throw to you, they don't try to get you out, they're trying to get you to hit the ball. <laughs> Even the former pitchers? Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Uh, uh, I suppose if you took a wild hack at them, they might brush you back a little bit. <laughs> when you're not hitting, you're on the field and uh, take ground balls, take fly balls. The guys that aren't throwing, the alums will come out and hang out with you on the field, talk a little bit. Three and two on Phillips. Oh. That was perhaps a mistake by umpiring on his own and heading off towards first base. Phillips singled his first time up. There's the number to call if you're interested. You can also go to the website and look for the link to alumni fans batting practice. Now it's limited to 40 spots, yeah. which is a good thing as Phillips lines to center and Meyer is there and into a slide for the first out. So it's not going to have 200 people on the field. You're going to get a lot of attention from the Royals alums. Well, I'll tell you, Frank's been out to these things. Nobody ever leaves at noon saying, I wish I could have had more swings. <laughs> They're pretty well cast. Yeah, they wore, they wore out. I mean, they, they've had a great time with, you know, sometimes they've got their their son along and they, they can hang out with them and, and get a feel for it. But I was telling Ryan, the, the, the one number one comment I, I hear from all the campers is that they can't realize how big the infield is. <laughs> <laughs> they, well, I remember John Mayberry's reaction the first time he saw this park, and that's the reaction they get is, wow, this place is really big. Now, I remember when you first started this, it seemed like it was geared more towards guys. And then a couple years after that, there was an encouragement by the Royals to maybe fathers and sons and daughters. Started. But this year, you want the moms to join the group. Well, Equal opportunity. Last year we started on Father's Day weekend, and somebody had the right idea. Let's invite them to bring the kids out. Let it be a father-son thing. Then it expanded this year to well, let's, if they're going to do that, let the moms come out too, because we couldn't do it on Father's Day weekend. One of the great things that I remember, I'll tell you after the pitch. Well, there's the broadcaster and Fred. He knew something was coming. It's a strikeout for Bannister, his first of the game. Right, a couple of years ago, Frank was out doing this batting practice day with us. And he's out in second base. Well, you can imagine 40 people out here participating. I think 39 of them that weren't hitting were all at second base with Frank. So they could just say, hey, I was out of second base with Frank. Why? I know what that's like. And Frank was doing his darndest to help him out and give him some tips and banter with him a little bit. It's just a fun day. The cost is $300 per adult. 300 for adults. You have to be 30 or over. If you want to bring one of your kids with you, boy or girl, they have to be 14 or older, and each kid is an additional $100. You get a pair of shorts, a T-shirt, and all the swings you want. Now, Duke, John Watson was here the other night, and as Mikel Olivo takes another foul ball, well, he's just been a almost like a, a backstop. And then speaking of backstops, there's Duke. Duke told us that there's also what fans will get some tickets to a game. Tickets, you have four tickets to a future game, not to an old game. The tickets are good. <laughs> <laughs> four tickets to a game, you get a pair of shorts, a t shirt, you're on the field with 10 former Royals, and, and, and you're going to have a great time. I can guarantee that. You get a little breakfast to go with it, too. Can you bring your cameras out, video cameras? Friends, and family members and friends can come out, they can bring their cameras. Uh, restrooms are open, concession stands are, but they can sit in the stands and, and watch. They also get an autographed ball or something from the alums. And just a lot of camaraderie. Yeah, one of the good things too, Fred, was uh, at the end, uh, they have an opportunity to get us all in one group and they, there's a Q&A &A session yeah. and they get, to get all their personal questions answered that we don't cover in our little ch chat talk with them in the in the locker room. So you can bring family and friends out, no charge for them. They can sit in the seats and right. watch. Right. Oh, that's a great deal. They, and they find out these are ordinary guys that did extraordinary things. And thank you. Thanks for stopping by, Fred. Okay. Thanks, Two strikeouts and a one, two, three, fourth for Bannister.
Five to one Royals as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the first of two strikeouts for Brian Bannister in the top of the fourth. Well, Banny's been done a great job, Ryan. Fastball away, fastball on the corner. His little cutter down underneath the swing, and that finished him off with a curveball. The one thing he's been really doing is working quick. I, mean, I love the way he goes to the mound. He just wants the ball and he said, let's go. And we thought the way Quaida worked fast, we thought that when both these guys go on, if they both were on, it would be a, he just breeze through the game. But the, the errors that have really caused him to throw a lot more pitches than he anticipated throwing, and, and that's why we are where we are. Mitch Meyer got a little fist pound from Kevin Seitzer as he flied out deep to left, taking Lance Nix almost to the warning track, so good swing, hard hit, but out. Now Myers 0 for 2, and Cueto, who has thrown a lot of pitches today, got the first out on just one delivery to Meyer. David DeJesus singled, leading off the third inning, and scored. Royals scoring four in the third. Royals with five runs today, all unearned. And Cincinnati's run today is unearned. So even the best or one of the best in the league in the National League Johnny Cueto is going to be vulnerable when he has to get a fourth out the four and five outs in the inning regardless of how well you pitch sooner or later it's going to catch up with you. It was not going to catch up with you in the pitch count sometimes if you're not uh, composed on the mound enough that you can work through it you can only get up and get down so many times before it affects you on the mound. You can always tell by the body language of the pitcher how he walks around after a mistake is made. Usually after the first one, they, they bounce back and go, but then there's two, and then there's three, and, and it kind of wears them down a little bit. There's an old baseball saying that says, you can have, or you can't have good pitching with bad defense. You can have bad pitching and good defense, but you can't have good pitching and bad defense. <laughs> but bad defense, you can't have anything in this game. <laughs> Into right center, and Jay Bruce runs it down to Jesus is one for three. Well, after an off day, the Arizona Diamondbacks are here on Tuesday. It's our next T-shirt Tuesday. Featuring pitching ace Zach Rinke. First 20,000 fans will get this T-shirt from Fox Sports Kansas City. That'll be Gil Mesh pitching for the Royals and Doug Davis for the Diamondbacks. Zach taking it easy today because his next opponent is not today's opponent. So he's not really honing in on the Reds hitters. He'll be facing a completely different lineup on Tuesday. A different lineup, uh, a team he won't see but once, and and it's not like he was, we're playing the White Sox and the Indians, where he knows he's going to get more opportunity to pitch against them. So he, he's probably just totally, like you said, he's just totally relaxed today. Willie Bloomquist has scored twice, singled, and reached on an air. Appearances so far, Bloomquist has made Cueto throw 20 pitches. That's a whole innings worth, a long innings worth to one hitter. Strikes out his third, and that's his first one, two, three inning.
White and Joel Goldberg, and we began the broadcast today, Frank, by saying that Brian Bannister would like to get the run support that Kyle Davies got last night, and so far he is getting that run support. Well, he's getting it, and, it, and I tell you what, uh, just to be able to get him early, you know, I think that's the key for Manny is getting those early runs and and just giving you a chance to relax. And I feel like you got to make a great pitch all the time, and and he's really doing a great job just getting the ball and throwing both sides of the plate and mixing. Uh, he's mixing his curveball in a little bit more uh, with his cutter rather than going right to his cutter pitch after pitch. And quickly 0 and 2 on Jay Bruce and Banny said he was inspired by what Luke Hochaver did on Friday night in the first game of the series against a struggling offense and an aggressive struggling offense. Very few deep counts his throw strikes force them to put the ball in play. Every pitcher would like to do that with three pitches or less and Luke did better than that over the course of nine innings. Well let's say what you, you take you, you take the road that, that, that Luke traveled to get to that game and and then to have uh, one of your your peers tell you that hey you inspired me to go out and, and pitch the way you pitch attack the zone work quick then that's got to make Luke feel pretty good too. Through the right side Jay Bruce is one for two. Bannister had retired 11 in a row. So the leadoff man on here is Danny's pitch count today brought to you by James B. Nutter and Company. An outstanding strike to ball ratio. Best case scenario you like to see two to one. And Vandy is one strike better than that and only 55 pitches in four plus innings. So Banny in good shape, but to put things in perspective, Luke Kochaver didn't throw his 55th pitch until the seventh. Ball one on Ramon Hernandez. Frank, you might remember you're part of the Royals coaching staff. In 1999 Hernandez was a rookie catcher with the A's and one of the most violent collisions I've seen at home plate. Remember when Steve Scarsoni was playing for the Royals. Oh yeah. And he good. laid out Hernandez here at Kauffman Stadium. Yeah we uh, picked up Steve. He had spent most of his career with the Giants and before he came over here. And he was a hard nosed utility player played played the game very well. Hernandez was out for a while after that. One hop to Tian. Out at second. Good hard slide by Jay Bruce. No double play, but the Royals get the lead runner. One on, one out in the fifth inning. Well, this is a good example here where Mark has to come in and get this ball and make a tough throw, and Alberto gets the ball. Now, that's when he should have just set up just going to get one out. And he, and he wants to try to turn two here. But he could have easily dropped that ball and they could have had another situation at second base. And you don't have to take that hit if you can read that play early enough to so get, get the ball, get to the inside, just get the one out. So every time you have a bad throw, that should be a good sign to say, you know, let's just go to the next play. It's almost as if Kiaspos should just think like a first baseman. Well, yeah, let's read, let's read the ball. Read what the fielder's doing. He's got to come in to get that ball. He's got to throw it to you on the run. He throws it down low, which is hard, hard play for a second baseman to turn anyway. So you just get the one out, clear the area so you don't get hit like that. The key, the key thing is not taking the hit, unnecessary hit at second base. So a couple of things could go bad on a play like that. You could get hurt for hanging in there too long and then maybe trying to get too quick. In transition with the ball, you drop the ball. Nobody's out. right. That's one. That's one play. You just want to keep the ball in your glove. You don't want to. If he gets hit as he's making the transition back to his hand, and the umpire doesn't call it in the act of throwing, now you got another situation. It's two and one on Brian Hannigan. It's got to be the first game I've seen in a while where you have so many take outside the second base. I'm starting to think it's baseball again. <laughs> 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 Frank, we have placed you in a time machine. <laughs> and down goes Hannigan, fouling one off of his foot. Two balls, two strikes. 
Our next broadcast in HD Tuesday night, day off tomorrow. Gil Mesh against Doug Davis. And John Buck has agreed to join us for a few innings in the broadcast booth. And it'll be a great addition as he has caught all but one, make that all but two of Gil Mesh's starts this year. Some out there playing catch today, so starting some baseball activities coming back from that herniated disc in his back. Well, it'd be kind of neat to get it, get his perspective on uh, on Gill, and we we talked to different people about Gill, and we even talked to John about Gill. But the, just uh, how they interact together, I'm sure there's some things that we don't know that they that they go through, and it'd be kind of neat to see. I'll have him in here in describing some of the things that the Gill goes through when he's doing well and, and when he uh, when he starts to struggle. I'm chatting with Jeff Stevenson, one of the Royals athletic trainers. And he strikes out his third. So Hannigan 0 for 2, 2 down to the fifth. Well, this is what I'm talking about here. When when guys go into second base like this, that tells me they came to play baseball. And and there's Tian going in there. There's Jacobs going in on Phillips on that play, and allowed the, the runner to be safe. And here's here's Bruce taking out Caspo here on this play here. So it, it means that these guys, are, even though that the, the Reds are having a hard time scoring runs, they haven't quit and trying to play aggressively. And the Rawls on the other side have started to add that more into their game over the last in, in toward the end of the last road trip. And what does that do to you as a second baseman when you know the runner at first is on his way and trying to drive you into left field? Well, it just keeps you from getting too relaxed. You know, it makes you start to evaluate the plays a lot better. You know, you evaluate evaluate uh, how the ball's hit, where it's hit, and the type of throw you're going to receive, whether you need to get two or just get one and get out of the way. Does it cause you to rush the throw every now and then or maybe lose your mechanics because you know that guy's bearing down on you uh, not really I think the only thing that hurts you is when you when you don't read the play and you try to make something out of nothing and you just if you read the ball the ball will tell you exactly what you need to do but it just this is rule of thumb to develop if the infielders are coming in chances are you're going to get one out and if it's a hard hit ball you know you're going to get two then it's where the throw is the throw is the throw makes a big difference too you saw the throw from Billy to second base I mean to Hernandez on the double play that was low and he threw the ball away trying to do too much. He saw Caspo there on the throw down where he probably should have got one kept the ball in his glove and got out of the way and ended up taking an unnecessary hit that he didn't have to take. So it's just about reading the ball. All right for the first and maybe only time in my life. I'm going to disagree with you okay. on play at second base. OK. Go ahead. <laughs> Everyone in the booth is looking at me like I lost my mind. But I'm going to say for you who won eight gold gloves, maybe some of that stuff applied because you're able to process all that and you're comfortable. But I'm going to say that most mortal second baseman <laughs> might not be as calm as you were in situations like that, and they might rush certain plays knowing that, man, if I don't hurry this throw, this guy's going to kill me. <laughs> well, if you get a good throw, you won't have to worry about rushing it. You're going you're gonna to turn your normal double play and you're going to escape the runner. But, but if the throw is off, if the throw takes you it puts you out of your your uh, your rhythm. Then when you're out of your rhythm, you should try to make the play. That, that's kind of what I'm saying there. But but it just but everybody who plays this game in the middle, they they they're not, not going to play very long if they don't start reading the ball and reading plays. You try to make something like that all the time. Not gonna happen. Two more strikeouts for Bannon.
Menu full of hearty soups, hand-tossed salads, inventive sandwiches, and savory breakfast items. Panera Bread, where every detail matters. Five to one KC, Billy Butler, Mike Jacobs, Miguel Olivo. Coming up against Johnny Cueto, who's given up five unearned runs. Two errors committed by third baseman Jerry Hairston. One of those on a ground ball from Butler back in the first. Chris Dickerson in center field today, fighting the sun and able to find the ball at the last moment. But Billy is 0 for 3, a nine game hitting streak coming in today. One thing that you can tell, look at the glasses of <laughs> Dickerson right there. Now that, that means the ball is almost directly in the sun, and that's a tough, tough play for any outfielder. Anybody catching the ball in the middle of the sun, it just it just kind of goes black, and you try to get on the edge, and you try to use your glove and everything else. So that, that's, that's a tough play when those glasses start to light up like that. One strike on Mike Jacobs, a walk and a fly out to center. So my point about you at second base. Oh, we're back to that. Yeah. Again. <laughs> That'd be like me asking Randy Johnson, are you intimidated when Albert Pujols steps in? And what do you think Randy Johnson would say? No. No. Well, yeah, because you're Randy Johnson. But for everyone else who pitches in the National League, oh, but it's different for them. Yeah, but Ryan, you, you can't play this game scared. <laughs> you know, and I'll tell you what Cookie Rojas told me. He said, young man, when when you learn when to do something and when not to do something in this game, you're going to be pretty good. So, uh, but you can't play the game scared. You got to learn from the game. Well, I've said this a million times, and I'll mention it again just because I think it says it so well. But the way Buddy Bell used to talk about the good players being able to slow the game down. Two and two to Jacobs. And there's a lot to that. I mean, when, when the game speeds up on you, guys start running all over the bases and the balls get thrown around, guys kicking the ball around. It's the guys that can make the throw, make the catch, and and and, and stop all, stop everything where it's at. They, they can slow the, they can just slow the game down. And when there's chaos all around, those are the guys who usually succeed. But if you can't have a lot of guys who continue to try to make something out of nothing, if you keep trying to make something out of nothing and don't try to manage the game, then the game gets away from you. Hit hard and a lucky stab by Hernandez, who actually played that like a catcher, went down to a crouch with the backhand to get Jacobs. Two down in the fifth inning. Coming up on Wednesday, the summer of 69 Retro Night is here at Boffin Stadium. Pre-game party featuring Liverpool. That's a Beatles cover band. Starting at 430, you'll enjoy throwback prices of $6 for lower level seats and Buck Night dollar concessions. So come on out, watch the Royals and the Diamondbacks and enjoy the pre-game party and Retro Night at the K. Those guys will be on hand to give you a mustache if you'd like it. <laughs> That's about as far away from home plate as you can get. One and two on Olivo. He has driven in two today and scored a run. with one in the first four in the third the Royals have swept a couple of two game series this year back to back White Sox and the Mariners back in early May that was tail end of the six game winning streak the Royals have not swept a three game series this year last time they did that was against Detroit last September 
Now Cueto has retired seven in a row and picks up his four strikeouts. Five to one Royals as we begin the Coors Light sixth inning and the Coors Light freeze cam. Royals getting four in the third inning. Two runs coming home on this Piasco triple that was in and out of Jay Bruce's glove. Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frostbrewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Forecast just a couple of days ago called for thunderstorms all day today, and it is a gorgeous day. Big crowd watching. And the Royals closing in on their first three game sweep of the year. Top of the order against Brian Bannister, third time through. Chris Dickerson is grounded out twice against Banny. Former 16th round pick of the Reds. Excellent athlete. Combination of speed and power, but he's off to a 238 start this year. One ball, two strikes. No walks given up by Bannister in his five innings. He has four strikeouts. Two and two. Banny gave up a couple of singles with one out in the first, but since then he has retired 14 out of 15. Back to Bannister. One out. Dickerson is 0 for 3. He's really, he's doing a good job, Ryan, turning the ball over and, and getting getting ground balls. And this was an easy one back to him, and and they just a little flip to Billy at first base. Looking like the former college infielder. Speaking of Banny in college, got a note here from Sandy McMillan before the game. Wanted us to mention that there's a Kansas City Alumni Club of the University of Southern California, and they're here to cheer on Brian Bannister, who went to USC. They are enjoying what they're seeing. <laughs> they probably saw a lot of this when he was in college. <laughs> Gonzalez scored the Reds run in the first inning and Reds taking advantage of an error throwing error by Luis Hernandez as the Royals failed to turn a double play. So all six runs today have been unearned. Three and one.
into center and Myers there. Two down in the sixth. But Danny makes a good pitch on three and one. Problem so far, but the sixth inning has been a troublesome inning for Bannister a few times this year, where he has been outstanding for five innings. But then in the sixth, which is a lot of times the third time through the order, he's had some problems. I think a lot of it comes from just realizing a lot of times that it is a third time through the lineup, and and the hitters have seen pretty much everything you've had to throw, and I think. Maybe getting a little too fine, you know, just trying to, you know, just make too good of pitches, and you find yourself walking guys, and and after that, your pitch count goes up a little higher, and then the manager's thinking about maybe it's time to make a move at that point. Oh, and two on Brandon Phillips, who's one for two today. Bill Bryan on Tuesday at Cleveland had a four to nothing lead going into the sixth. Lead off walk to Jamie Carroll. So there you talk you're exactly what you're talking about. And the Royals committed a couple of errors. And the Indians ended up tying the game at four in that sixth inning. Got four more in the seventh on the DeRosa Grand Slam. Didn't mean to go around. Bannister kind of stumbled as he threw, but gets Phillips. And Brian Bannister has retired 17 of the last. Five to one as we go to the sixth inning. This is a Sonic Slam inning, and our contestant is Stacy Labor from Blue Springs, Missouri. If the Raws hit a home run this inning, Stacy will win two hundred dollars. But if the Raws hit a grand slam out of the park, Stacy will win twenty-five grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. And Alberto Cayaspo leads off. He just missed his fifth home run of the year. Back in the Royals' four-run third inning, hitting a. Triple in and out of the glove of Jay Bruce, who was leaping up against the chain link fence in front of the Royals bullpen. Alberto one for two, an eight game hitting streak. He has four RBIs in this series. Late swing on a fastball, it's one and two. Hey, one thing about Bird, he, he does stuff just so unassuming. You know, he's one of those guys in your lineup that you get to him, and it's easy to say, "Well, this guy is nothing to worry about." And but he's he's pesky, he, and he comes up with big hits, and he's been driven in some big runs lately. But he, he just, I would think he'd be that one guy in the lineup. They say, "Well, you know, we just just throw just throw fastballs and he, he, no power, can't drive the ball," and all of a sudden you look up, he's trotting around the bases.
behind Rusty Kuntz. Well, you mentioned earlier Willie Bloomquist's improvement this year. A lot of it just from more playing time, and I think the same applies to Alberto Kiaspo. If you were to ask him, you know, the secret behind his 2009 season, he might say, well, I'm getting a chance to play every single day. Uh, Miguel Olivo said the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he, rather than playing every playing two days and having a day off, or the inconsistency of the of the playing time, now he's playing every single day, and, and he said that's why he's been able to not think so much at the plate and just look for the ball and react to the ball. Well, that looks like a guy who's thinking right now. He's probably thinking about the next hitters in the next inning. <laughs> Well, his reputation has improved in that department this year. Miguel Olivo taking the catching side a lot more seriously and doing a lot more of thinking ahead. Who's coming up? How are we going to pitch him? Four run lead, at least right now, unless the Royals add on here in the sixth inning. How in the world did Kiasco hit that ball there? Well, it was the same pitch that he hit behind Rusty Coombs a minute ago, that slider down and in. And I, I think that they've just got him looking there. They've, they've been in there so many times that, that he's just looking in there and he's able to go down and kind of what I, what I would like to call it, like dig it out and bring it back up. And he, he's been able to do that. And and he hit that ball hard. <laughs> well, he just threw the bat head down. It's like that golf swing we talked about. Just threw the bat head to the ball. Harrison and Gonzalez and Harrison kind of straddling the line. That's a fair ball catch. Aspo is one for three. Well, the Cardinals will be here at Kauffman Stadium on Father's Day this upcoming Sunday. Tickets are still available, but they're going fast. So dads, get the tickets you want before they're all gone. 1-800-6-ROYALS, royals.com. You can stop by the stadium box offices or go to any hy Bee food store. Three-game series begins on Friday night. Royals looking for some payback after the Cardinals took two out of three in St. Louis. It's Mark Tien, two singles. He has driven in a run. Sliders a little high. Father daughter enjoying the game. One and two. In this inning. And especially with the nine pitch duel with Piaspo. Johnny Cueto has gone over 100 pitches. He has had some long innings today. Still throwing 96, however. One hundred and five pitches, five and a third innings. Thirty two pitches in the first, twenty eight in the third. Still two and two. You could probably take about 25 of those pitches, Ryan, and, and give them to the defense. Because anytime you make you make a mistake on the defense, you're going to add seven or eight pitches to the next to the pitches pitch total, and that's really made a big difference in uh, 105 pitches at this juncture in the game. Just a bit inside. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Our next HD telecast will be Tuesday with the Arizona Diamondbacks in town. Royals live with Joel Goldberg at 6:30. First pitch at 7:10. Brought to you by Time Warner Cable, where HD is free with digital cable. Through the right side, a three-hit game for Mark Tian. Uh, he's, he's real quiet today. I mean, he's just taking good swings and two line drives up the middle. And here's a 94 mile hour fastball that he brings his hands in and gets the fat part of the bat on and hits it in the right field for a base hit. 
And that, you can do that when you stay back. You stay back, let the ball come to you. Sometimes he can get a little forward and, and, and really drag his bat, but he's done a great job standing on that back leg and using his hands today. Our discussion a couple of innings ago about you can have good defense with bad pitching, but you can't have good pitching with bad defense. If the Reds handled the two plays that resulted in errors, Johnny Cueto not only would be in this game and not down by four, he would have thrown 23 fewer pitches. Tian rounded second, he lost track of the ball. So he has to retouch, and the Reds double him up. So a rare Mark Tian base running mistake. Royals scoreless in the sixth. Brian Bannister has been strong through six innings, only giving up an unearned run. He's retired 17 of the last 18. And the Royals with five runs, four coming in the third. Alberto Caspo with a two run triple. Has a hitting streak of eight games. Billy Butler hitless so far. He has a nine game hitting streak. David DeJesus has extended his to seven games. Olivo to six. And Tian with three hits has extended. A streak to seven games. Lance next, Johnny Gomes, Jay Bruce. Four, five, six hitters coming up. Tiaspo will throw out Lance next. 0 for 3 today and 0 for 9 in the series. This will make it 18 of the last 19 knocked down by Bannister. Today's copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. 0 oh, and 1 to Johnny Gomes. One on Gomes. Bannister mentioned before the game today that he felt like he could really just empty the closet against the Reds because this is a team he will not see again this year. So he doesn't have to hold anything back because he might face them another time or maybe two or three times if they were a team in the American League Central, but since he won't see them again and with interleague play, who knows, he might not see them again for five years that there was no holding back today. Well, that gives a pitch a certain degree of confidence, and, uh, you know, it, I really uh, think it's hard to... Uh... That's a fair ball off the bat of Gomes. Trying for two, 
And a Jesus throw is a little late. Gomes with his third hit of the series, all extra base hits. And that's the first runner for the Reds to get to second base since the first inning. It's a changeup that comes down and in. That's a changeup that should turn over, but actually ran back into uh, Gomes' bat, and he, he was able to get inside of it and keep it fair inside the bag. David does his normal great job of getting over there and cutting that ball off and getting it back to second base. No, when you say holding back, uh, because you don't have to face another uh, team down the road, I wonder how to decide what I'm going to hold back and what I'm going to let out. You know, sometimes you just got to go for the win and, and and whatever it takes to get that win, and then you worry about the next game when the next game comes along. But I don't say you can pitch this game thinking about uh, what what maybe down the road when you have to face them again, maybe the following week. Up the middle, Hernandez, great play. Good throw. Bruce is out. And that's a defensive play of the game. Well, Hernandez is known for his glove, Ryan, and he does a great job of getting to this ball and slicing back to him a little bit. But what he does here, he shows the poise in getting up, getting back on top, and making a nice throw to first base. You know, a lot of guys will get this ball and they'll start rushing and throw it away, but he really set himself good and, and gave Billy a real nice throw over the top. So two down and now Ramon Hernandez. Well, to answer your question, it may not always work out for Brian Bannister, but we do know he's a deep thinker and everything he does, there's a there's a process, there's a well thought out plan. So maybe there are times when he feels like, well, you know, I'm going to see them in a week or two. Not that he's trying to hold back anything that would keep him from winning the ball game, but maybe there's a little different approach saying that I might not be as aggressive with this pitch. And you think maybe that's that's something more of a control pitcher has to think about as opposed to a guy, a power pitcher who says, hey, here's what I've got. See if you can hit it. I'm not sure. I've never heard a pitcher say that. So I'm not sure exactly what uh, what he means. I know as a hitter. You don't try to hold anything back. <laughs> you going to you want to go get the pitcher. You want to be aggressive. But like you say he does think deep and um, I know. He probably got things in his brain that, that I probably can't even hold in mind. <laughs> but I just I just try to keep it simple. You know just go get him be aggressive and we'll worry about tomorrow tomorrow. Whatever's approach is today it has worked. Reds with just four hits in six and two thirds innings. And even with the Gomes double here in the seventh, Danny has retired 19 of the last 21. Still under 100 pitches. Juan Cruz has just started to warm up in the Royals bullpen. A long throw for Tian. Inning over. The Royals in front.
Thing. Let's go around the league brought to you by Panera Bread. Good news in Pittsburgh with the Pirates in front of the Tigers. Royals six and a half back of Detroit. White Sox and Brewers tied at four. White Sox one game in front of the Royals. Minnesota going for a sweep over the Cubs. Wow. 15 to nothing. Yankees over the Mets. Marlins beating up on the Blue Jays. Tampa Bay in front of Washington. And the Royals coming up in the bottom of the seventh against a new pitcher. Left hander Daniel Ray Herrera. 27th appearance. I'll tell you what. The Reds aren't throwing a lot of size out at the Royals on the mound today. Cueto listed at 5'10. Herrera is listed at 5'6. It's 2 and 1 on Meyer. Well, he's not overpowering either, Ryan. His, his fastball tops out at 84. And he's got the curveball, but he do not have word that we don't see very often in this game anymore is a screwball. And you have to go back to Steve Mangori, who, who's a comparable size to Herrera, who has a screwball that kind of goes down and away to left-handed hitters. Also makes me think of... I'm sorry, the right-handed hitters. Fernando Valenzuela. Full count on Meyer, 0 for 2. Flight out to deep left his last time. So I guess Jimmy Serrano would be in that height range. You know, he pitched for me at Double A, and he eventually got here to pitch with pitch for the Royals. Shallow center, Dickerson's there. Meyer is 0 for 3. Well, we hope that you'll take time tomorrow evening and join us at Dick Sporting Goods at 119th and Nall for gloves for kids. Ten Royals will be there signing autographs. One group from 6 to 7 p.m. the other from 7 to 8 p.m. to benefit the RBI program. David DeJesus bats with one out. He'll be there. The final roster Brian Bannister John Buck Billy Butler Kyle Davies David DeJesus Luke Hochaver, Mitch Meyer, Brian Pena, Tony Pena Jr., and Mark Tian, along with Slugger, tomorrow between 6 and 8 p.m. David one for three, singled and scored in the Royals' four run third inning. Knocked down by Hairston and throws on target. His two errors today have resulted in five unearned runs for the Royals. And up comes Willie Bloomquist. And as Willie Bloomquist comes up, Dusty Baker heads to the mound. So a couple of left-hand batters for Herrera. And now righty, Nick Massett, comes on to face Bloomquist.
Massett was part of another trade two trades ago before he got to the Reds. That was the deal that sent Brandon McCarthy to the Rangers and the White Sox picking up John Danks along with Nick Massett. The flag sunglasses on flag day. The old Brock umbrella. <laughs> that was a that was a Lou Brock invention. <laughs> but you can't wear that on the field, right? No, Unless you put the team logo on the on the front of it. <laughs> uh, just for sitting in the stands. <laughs> Phillips at second gets Bloomquist. Royals down in the seventh inning. To the eighth, Royals ahead by four. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Eighth inning, Brian Bannister with a four-run lead, pitching into the eighth. Tony Pena Jr. is now at shortstop, replacing Luis Hernandez, who has made the defensive play of the game. That was last inning on a ground ball from Jay Bruce. Frank Kite, Royals assistant athletic trainer, going over there to give Hernandez a little pat on the back. So who knows? Maybe he landed awkwardly when he made that diving play. Certainly, Tony Pena is an outstanding defensive shortstop, but Hernandez isn't one of those guys that you want to get out of the game because of uh, any lack of defense. I mean, he's a he's an excellent defensive player with major league experience and. And I hope nothing's wrong with him. I, he looks like uh, you like to see him smiling a little bit more. So hopefully, uh, when he dove for that ball, nothing happened that would, would make Trey make this make this move. You know, back in the seventh inning, this is a play he made that that was outstanding play. It's been really the most outstanding play of the game in, in our estimation. Well, he, you know, I guess if you want to judge it on that play, I mean, nothing could have happened on that play, but. May have landed a little heavy on that left wrist. But he doesn't look like a very happy guy on the bench. Three and 
Three and two on Ryan Hannigan, who has struck out, grounded out against Ryan Bannister, who is now at 100 pitches. So he's been efficient today. Never more than 19 pitches in an inning. That is his first walk. Remember, you can stay connected to the game on your computer. If you subscribe to MLB.tv, you'll get 100 out of market games per week. You can catch games you missed on demand. And a premium subscription allows you to pause, fast forward, and rewind live TV. Jerry Hairston Jr. takes strike one. A three generation baseball family. Grandfather Sam. Father Jerry. And then Jerry Jr. And not long after that, Scott Hairston, Jerry's brother, who plays now with the Padres. Well, I had an opportunity to meet. Sam, the dad, when I was in the baseball academy, he was the minor league hitting coach for the White Sox there in Sarasota and, and had a chance to play against Jerry when he played second base for the White Sox. And I believe Sam was kind of a groundbreaking type player. I think he might have been the first African American player with the White Sox. Yeah, he came back from the from the Negro Leagues also in that era that of, of all those guys. He's telling me all those great stories. Billy into foul ground to get Hairston. Result for three and has committed two huge errors. So one on, one out. And for the first time, let's find Joel Goldberg. Hey guys, wanted to let everybody know with next week and the Cardinals coming to town, we're going to have a little fun. Take the Royals live pregame show outside to Lot B, and we're looking for some tailgaters. And I know that's not too difficult to find serious tailgaters. We have a little competition, so if you want to get involved in this, email us at royalsbooth.msnbc.com, your name, phone number, email address, where you live, what a normal tailgate experience is like, Ryan. Safe, no double play. Dickerson runs well. The Royals get the second out. That allows me to continue, and it is not a two-out plea, but send us all your... <laughs> information why we should select your group and we're going to take these emails in get a few finalists that we believe are the best tailgaters and barbecue experience and all that out there and then we're going to have a little cook-off going during that pregame show and we're going to judge on food presentation theme of the group and have a little bit of fun again the email address Royals booth at MSN dot Royals booth at MSN dot com and also if you have a picture of past tailgates anything you can do to convince us that you should be one of the finalists and maybe we'll even, well, I don't know, you guys won't be able to come out there, but we'll, we'll bring some food into you. <laughs> and we'll eat it. <laughs> I know you will. Can we be one of the judges? Yeah, we got to figure out, you know, satellite communications and all. I don't know how you eat it over TV, but we'll the, figure it out. Yeah, have to do it by smell. <laughs> by smell. <laughs> Presentation. Presentation, yeah. I mean, I've seen some serious tailgaters, but we're not talking about just get out the little hibachi. I'm talking about a production. <laughs> Well, you're all about flash, aren't you, Joel? Which Meyer is. <laughs> Gonzalez lines out. Brian Bannister's allowed an unearned run in eight innings. <laughs>
So Brian Bannister allowing just one unearned run in eight innings so far. Joaquin Soria has just started to warm up. Not in the Royals bullpen. Kyle Davies getting great run support yesterday. Talking to Banny on the bench. And Kyle ending a long streak without a win. And now Bannister with a four-run lead. And the Royals coming up in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Joaquin Soria is going to enter, it appears, back-to-back -back games. Non-save situations, but getting some innings. Well, I, I talked to him earlier, Ryan. He just felt like he just needed more innings. Uh, when he went out to Arizona, I think he had two appearances out there and two appearances on the road trip and then last night. So he just felt like he just needed more innings to, to build up everything, his stamina, his uh, command. And he just felt the, the fastball he threw last night. Normally that ball is on the corner, whether it be outside or inside, or left in the middle of the plate. But he felt he got better and stronger as that inning went. Jay Bruce trying to angle himself to take the sun out and did an excellent job of doing that. And Billy Butler is 0 for 4, so that is the end of his nine game hitting streak. Well, Ryan, you called it right on that one. You can see him trying to get off the edge of the sun and try to position himself to stay out in the center of the sun, and he did a great job of playing that ball. So one down in the eighth inning. Dusty Baker is going to make a pitching change, and it's veteran lefty Arthur Rhodes. on a bullet from Jay Bruce in the seventh inning. Did not return for the top of the eighth. May have injured himself on that dive. Tony Pena Jr. replaced him. Good pitching from Brian Bannister and a good day at the plate. Taking advantage of those two errors and turning him into five unearned runs. And here's Arthur Rhodes. Mike Jacobs 0 for 2 with a walk. What? One ball, one strike. Arthur Rhodes, 39 years old. His first year in the big leagues was 1992, 17 years ago. Into the seats, one ball, two strikes. Came up with the Orioles, former second round pick of the O's in 88. So he was drafted 21 years ago. He was with Baltimore from 92 till 99, then Seattle for four years. And then he's bounced around Oakland in 04, Cleveland in 05, Philadelphia in 06, back to Seattle 
and also with Florida and now at the Reds. Now the one way to hang around that long line is to have first of all be left handed and and be able to throw strikes and get left handed hitters out but also to stay healthy you have to stay healthy to play that long. Still one ball, two strikes. Rhodes coming up as a starter, but Baltimore Orioles realized very early in his career that he was better suited for the bullpen. Never really had any big save seasons. There have been a few teams that have tried to use him as a closer. He had nine saves with Oakland in 04, but he's had a lot of successful years as a left handed setup man. Two and two on Jacobs. Nick Massett got Billy Butler on a fly ball to right in this inning, and the pitching changed to bring in Rhodes. And it's still two balls, two strikes. the Rhodes at the beginning of his career that was the end of Lee Smith's career who for a long time was the all time saves leader passed by Trevor Hoffman a couple of years ago and was influenced by Lee Smith and his mentality as a late inning reliever learned the routine that Lee Smith had every single day whether he thought he was going to pitch or not I love the story about Lee Smith's routine. Every day he would shag batting practice. I don't know if this is true or not, <laughs> but he would shag batting practice, sleep for six innings, and then stroll out to the bullpen in the seventh. Well, that's that's pretty true. <laughs> I was there in Boston when he was when he was closing there, so that's pretty true. Is it? <laughs> well, he walks Jacobs. Yeah, I don't know. I can't I can't vouch for the sleep part, but I know he was he was in the clubhouse. <laughs> Mike Jacobs hadn't gotten a lot of hits in this series, but he's starting to draw some walks and laying off some pitches that he was otherwise chasing. Hit the ball hard today, grounded out sharply to Hernandez at first, who he stands next to now. And brings up Miguel Olivo, who has a two RBI game. Driven to deep left field. Olivo. Talked about that down and in, and there's a slider going down and in, and Miguel Olivo just dropped a bad hit to the ball, and they just and when he hits the ball square, it's going to go somewhere, and this one went in the left field fountains. That's in the drink. <laughs> now it's 0 and 2 on Alberto Cayaspo. He has the other two run extra base hit today. So a good day for Olivo, four RBIs, and behind the plate, he's caught a gem from Brian Bannister. He's done an outstanding job. And One ball, two strikes. One for three. And he is hit in eight straight games. It's only 
only the second home run given up all year by Arthur Rhodes. Rhodes in a position now. We we're talking about how he was influenced by Lee Smith, but I'm, he's in a position now where he will now influence the younger relievers. And who knows? Maybe the next Arthur Rhodes type pitcher, 15, 16 years from now, will talk about how in the 2009 season in Cincinnati was influenced by a guy who's been in the game for a long time. Well that's true Ryan and, and when you've been in the game a while you, I think part of your responsibility is to is to make the game better to leave the game in better hands than when you got it and that's when you educate players that do your type of job and how to how to be a professional how to go about their job how to develop a routine and have those guys continue to pass that professionalism down from player to player then the game continues to uh, be at a high level from a professional standpoint and integrity standpoint. Diaspo with a second hit. And the Royals with nine today. So Rhodes has had a tough time after coming on with one out. A walk, a two run home run, and now a single. But again, it's that slider that's going down, right? But it's not going down and biting and right? And the hitters are able to get the bat hit to it. and. And uh, get base hits on it, but when you throw that slider down, it's, it's got to really have a lot of bite to the back leg, and well, it's got to bounce it on the plate. But this slider is just hanging right there for those guys to get the bat hit to it. One strike on Mark Tian, who has a three-hit game, three singles. His RBI was back in the third inning. No balls, two strikes. No, Tian is hit in seven straight games. There's three hits today. On strikes, two down in the eighth inning. So Rhodes has been hit hard by the Royals in this inning, but he still appears to have plenty of bullets in the chamber. His ERA was .86 coming in today, and the league hitting is 153 against him, the National League, that is. And now Tony Pena Jr. bats for the first time. Luis Hernandez, who started at shortstop, was 0 for 3. One strike on Pena. Jose Guillen getting the day off. He'll get two days off with no game tomorrow. Billy Bloomquist playing in right field. And Bloomquist scored a couple of runs, and Miguel Olivo, who he's talking to right now, taking his place in the batting order, and Olivo with four RBIs. Rhodes strikes out Pena on three pitches to end the inning, but the Royals get two more on the Olivo home.
Call 800-808-FORD or stop in today in Northland at I-29 and Perry Road and in Platte City. Coming up on Boulevard Royals Live with Joe Goldberg after the game. Royals three outs away from their first pregame sweep of the year. Brian Bannister giving the bullpen a rest with eight great innings. Royals have extended some hitting streaks, several Royals, and a preview of the next series against Arizona. Brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company, Kansas City's beer. And Brian Pena will take over behind the plate for Miguel Olivo. And a new battery with Pena back of the plate and Juan Cruz on the mound. One on Brandon Phillips, single back in the first inning, one for three. And the Royals have so far kept the Reds number three and number four hitters without an RBI in this entire series. And a fastball at 95 hits the outside corner. Two and two. Juan Cruz has taken losses in his last two decisions. Well, Trey Hillman putting him in a non pressure situation here to help him work out some kinks and a good start with the strikeout of Phillips. But Brandon Phillips goes the entire series without an RBI. That's that changeup, that real good changeup that he has, and I don't know, I don't think he has enough confidence in that changeup. We saw him throw it the other day in Cleveland, and we thought he should throw it a little bit more, and he just kind of picks his spots for it. But that's one of the better changeups we have on the on the staff. Lance Nix, 0 for 3 today, 0 for 9 in the series, and 3 for his last 28, and promptly lines one to left center field. One on one out in the ninth inning. Johnny Gomes one for three with a double. Six over the inside corner. Royals getting eight great innings from Brian Bannister. Gave up only four hits, one run. It was unearned. Bannister retired 23 of the last 26. Nix takes off for second base. Butler was not holding him. No stolen base for Lance Nix. Defensive indifference. Defensive, we don't care. That's one of those plays where the other team won't let you get away with both. If you want to play up on, on the guy, behind the guy, play a little defense, they won't let that guy run. But if you want to play all the way back and and, and take both sides of the game away and try to run the other team, so to speak, then a lot of managers will run that guy. Popped up. Pena wants it on the left side. Two outs in the ninth inning. Everyone begins to stand at Coffin Stadium. Another nice crowd. The sweeping begins. 24,525. Royals have not swept a three game series yet this year. They have swept a couple of two game series. Jay Bruce is one for three. Strike 
strike one. One ball, one strike. First place, Detroit. In a similar situation as the Royals, two outs in the ninth inning, and they trail Pittsburgh. And the Royals, one out away from being just five and a half back in the Central Division. Hit hard to right field. Bloomquist makes the play, and the Royals sweep the series.